they was trying to get their name in the ranking just like I was trying to get mine. So anytime I was seen, motherfuckers was on me. I see them, I'm on them. Same way. So you didn't, you didn't last the 10th grade then? Oh no, not one bit. None of, none of us did. We all got rolled up. Straight up, all of us. Every last one of us got rolled up out of there. They got me first. After they got me, then they got Big Hook. Then after they got Big Hook, they got Frankie Hood and Lumpy together, then they got chopped. So that's something that the Grape Streets could actually probably say to this day is that that's our school. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's our school. Oh, they can claim that without a doubt, man. They can't nobody debate with that or say, oh, hell no, nigga, we flipped it over one year. No, bro. Until after the early 70s when it was all Watts and it was pig meats and, 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 and the green jackets, that's when the first generation was all together there. That's the only time that Jordan didn't, wasn't predominant by a gang because it was just Watts. When them 70s, the early 70s hit, the late 70s merged, and territorial st struck, where motherfuckers were starting to be divided, oh man, it was a wrap, it was a no-no. So you go, you go to, to Locke and you're playing sports, but these are also like the formative gang-banging years. Oh man, So yep. you're trying to play football, but at the same time, when you're 16, 17, that's, your, that's like the height of your gang-banging. So how, how does this play out for you? And not, not only that, it's like, Everything is intriguing, it's exciting, you know what I mean? Not to mention that already you got a few years under your belt, you know what I mean? You done, done a couple of things, so, you know, people speaking your name, you know, when the girls see you, they hollering your name, you know what I mean? So all that shit was intriguing, man, as, as a young gangster, a gang manager coming up. So that shit was just more influence. But I was still trying to stay focused. One thing about me was in my household, see, I had to live two different lives, uh, Alonzo, first and foremost. I couldn't, like a lot of my homeboys became gang bangers and gang members early in the game because of the parenting, you know, the, the broken households. For me, fortunately, I didn't have that story. I didn't lead to the streets because my parents was dope fiends or my daddy wasn't there. I had my biological father, my biological mother, and it was beautiful, man. So I had a great upbringing as far as my family. I'm, I, I was taught to be family orientated. You know, morals, principles, values. Right now today, I say yes, sir, yes, ma'am to my elders. You know what I mean? Right now today. So, uh, and that was the difference between a lot of gangsters back then. You know, you heard gangsters. These was hardcore dudes, but you would hear him respectfully say yes, ma'am, or yes, sir to elders. And so, um, I had to live a double life. I had to live a life where in my household, to my parents, I was who they seen me to be. But once I left that door, I put my uniform on. You know, it was like going to school and you couldn't wear certain things to school, so you had to leave out your house looking a certain way. But once I got out of my house, then I put my uniform on, my flag, my colors. I didn't leave out the house like that. You feel me? I would tuck that shit in one of my homeboys' houses or something, or leave it in my locker. So once I got to school, then I flame up and put my colors on, shit like that, man. So, you know, it, it was just a, uh, you know, a different upbringing for me. But... I, I ended up clinging to the streets primarily because of the loss of my parents. I lost my parents back to back. I lost my king first from cancer. He was stricken from cancer. And then from there, you know, and, I, and to, to, to see a man go from 240 some, 240-some pounds at six fold, man, to literally like 80 pounds in 10 days, bro, and it looked like a stick on that table, man. That shit fucked me up at a young age, you know what I'm saying? But it prepared me kind of too because all the teaching and that he gave me in my upbringing. So a lot of the stuff that he instilled in me, I was prepared, you know what I mean, to be able to survive. And so, uh, but I wasn't prepared to lose my little brother after that, 17. He busted blood vessel in his heart at basketball practice from a car accident six months that, that had happened prior to that. Then my queen, lost my queen, same thing, cancer. So I lost my father, my mother, and my little brother back to back in between. So of course that would take any young cat on edge at that time, man. So instead of me resorting to drugs like the average individual would have and become a drug addict or a dope fiend, I knew that was a no-no. I wasn't having that. I, I was too strong for that. So I just became volatile. I be, let's just say I became the devil himself, man. I put the whole fucking red suit on and I became the devil. So did you lose your father while you were still in high school or right after? Right before I was graduating. Senior? Yes. Okay. Yes. I hear, matter of fact, I had just returned back home 
from YA from doing a nickel and, and, and going back to high school because I went to YA. I went to YA for two, two counts of attempted murder, an ADW and, and a murder. A murder it wasn't mine. It was just it was on a dirty gun, a gun that I had, and it wasn't my wasn't my body. So I, I beat that, but then um I ended up getting convicted for a count of ADW. They ended up dropping the two attempts, which was attempts on was on um some Gray Streets, I, you know, at Markham Junior High School. They hit me for a shooting at the occupant dwelling and shooting at about 30 individuals. So uh, allegedly, they say, allegedly, I suppose, have done this. But uh, anywho, I ended up getting convicted. They gave me five years of CYA. So I went to YA. That's when I landed in TS. I went to Paso Robles. So I went to Paso Robles and dominated my 10th grade year in Paso Robles football for Paso Robles. I played for them the whole year. So that's how I got my recruitment to get the scholarship to FSU because the coach from Paso Robles. So I went and lived with him on campus once I parole. So my whole plan was I supposed to play ball up north, not go back home. I went back home. So now I'm going home on the weekends to my mama house. And my mama moved to 31st and Griffin. You know what I mean? Right there off of 31st and Griffin and Ascot. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, Is that a 35 rooster? Yeah, definitely. Right down there, big rooster and all them, home with all the homies. So I, I, my mom's moved down there, so I was going to a fourth there to home, up north and back home, and then I fooled around and got caught up for a manufacturing case, and got caught with a gang of money, sent me to the penitentiary. So that blew my chances from that point on. So okay, so so after you leave uh, the Jordan Downs and go to go to Lock, you you catch these cases in, in the tenth grade, right? 